Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm standing here with the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. Now, selling a printer in 2025 running Marlin should be a crime that is punishable. And that punishment should be blobs of death for all eternity. However, during the development and release of the Ender 3 SE, one can make the argument that Marlin was still rather prevalent in the 3D printing industry. That has changed dramatically in a short time, and luckily the Ender 3 version 3 SE is compatible with the Nebula Pad, bringing Creality OS, aka Clipper, and all of the fixins that come along with it. This video is extremely late, However, it remains a requested topic, and I continue to see people struggle with what should be a rather straightforward upgrade. So today, we are going to walk through it together and hopefully get you from the Stone Ages to the Now Ages with a shiny new Nebula Pad and all the bells and whistles that come with it on your Ender 3 SE. Before we get started, we will make sure you have the proper software. And by software, I mean firmware for your Ender 3 SE. No, not the Nebula Pad. We are not making the Nebula Pad compatible with the SE. We are making the SE compatible with the Nebula Pad. Let's go ahead and get that firmware now. In preparation for getting that firmware, I'd like to point out you will need one SD memory card. I do not recommend the pile of crap that comes with your printer. Please use a quality card. If you do not have one, feel free to try the pile of crap. I will leave a link to a decent card in my description. This card must be 32 gigabytes or less and formatted in FAT32. Also, it is very important that you do not have the G sensor plugged into the Nebula Pad when you do this install. We must do the install without the G sensor plugged in to the Nebula Pad. Get it? Got it? Good. Take your card, pop over to your computer. Just in case you're a little confused, this is what your memory card setup should look like when you format it. VAT32, 4096, allocation unit size. In order to download the firmware for your Ender 3 version 3 SE, navigate to Creality.com and hover your mouse over support. Bring your mouse down to Download Center. Here, you will scroll down to Ecosystem. Click on Ecosystem. Click on Creality Nebula Smart Kit. In here, you will see a few things. One of them is a mounting arm you can print and screw in to your Ender 3 version 3 SE. However, we will not use this one. The sensor bracket model, which you may go ahead and download, it looks like this. You will attach this to your printer using screws, or you may attach the sensor with some double-sided tape, which is what I am going to do. The next one is the LCD monitor arm. You can print this and use the screws already on the current screen mount to attach this mount for the Nebula Pad. However, we are going to download and print a different one that doesn't require removing that mount or changing any screws. Scrolling down, you will see 3D print firmware. This is what we need to download for the SE printer itself. Everything else you see is for the Nebula Pad itself. You will notice they are tagged OTA. That OTA indicates that these firmwares are downloaded over the air. In other words, the Nebula will download and update these firmwares once it's functional. Go ahead and download the 3D print firmware you will need to download and unzip that file. You are going to take this file, Ender 3 V3SE firmware.bin and simply copy it to the root directory of your memory card. That's it. We are going to do nothing else. In your web browser, move over to Thingiverse. In Thingiverse, do a search for Nebula Adapter and you'll see a bunch of stuff. We are going to take this one right here, download all files or click here on files and download here. This download has no weight. 
If you click here, there will be an ad you need to wait through. With that file downloaded, import it into Creality Print. You will see the orientation it loads. Leave it right here. We are going to go ahead and click on Strength. I'm going to add three walls. I'm going to up my infill to at least 20%. Let's do 22%. Moving down to speed, please go slowly to make sure things go smoothly. Moving down to support, we are going to enable support. We're going to choose tree auto. We are going to leave it at default. Send this off to your printer, pop off the supports and meet me over at your desk. All right, now that you've followed my instructions on the PC to the letter, it's time to swap the Nebula pad with the Marlin pad. To start, reach behind and gently disconnect the cable. Then firmly grab the Marlin screen, pull it up and remove it. With that screen removed, gently toss it into the garbage. <laughs> Jingle optional. On the back of the Nebula pad, you'll see the same connector you just removed from your Marlin pad. Go ahead and connect it to the Nebula pad. Take the adapter you just printed and locate the smaller pegs. Position the smaller pegs so that when upside down, they are facing the machine. Position them into the holes on the back of the Nebula pad and slide them up until they lock into place. Fold the Nebula over, matching up the other holes with the other pegs and gently push down. It may or may not snap into place. However, your screen should now be mounted. Should your screen be butting into the machine, turn your adapter over, you've installed it backwards. There are more stable options out there for adapters, but for now, this one will do. If you'd like to use a different one, feel free to do so, including the official Creality one available on the website as shown previously on our adventures with the computer. Remember that memory card? and how you're not gonna use the crappy one that came with it, well, I'm gonna do that. You have the bin file copied to this memory card, and we will take this card and insert it right here on the side of your machine. Insert the card into the machine. The card goes into the machine, bottoms up. That's pins up, not label up, pins up. The card should slide smoothly and gently into the machine, click, and then click into lock. If the card feels stiff and drags into the slot, you have it upside down. Be sure it's bottoms up. Click in, click to lock. With the machine plugged in and the G sensor disconnected, I'm only gonna remind you 10 more times. Go ahead and turn the machine on. Once it boots, choose your language and press next step. Check the box and press next step. Set up your Wi-Fi. Type in your password. You should see a check mark, an IP address and the Wi-Fi symbol next to your Wi-Fi. Press next step. Choose your time zone. Press next step. Being the rebellious nerds that we are, we will skip that and press the start button. We will choose our printer. And here we are. It's looking to bind our machine to Creality Cloud. You will need the Creality Cloud app on your phone. You will then open the app, click the plus button, click scanning code to add devices, and place the phone over the QR code. 
go ahead and name your printer. I will name mine Sylvia. Press done, press finish. You will now see your SE shows up as a Sonic Ender, which is so awesome in Creality Cloud. Go ahead and press next step. Go ahead and press start detecting. This process will run in auto bed leveling and set your Z offset. Now it's time to install the mount for the G sensor. You will 3D print this piece that we looked at earlier. I am going to use double sided tape. You may use screws. This is adjustables. This is meant to be repositioned. This allows me to easily put the sensor on and take the sensor off. We will remove these two screws right here. Match this piece up and install it using the longer M3 screws that came in your kit. Or if you're lazy like me, put a piece of double-sided tape on it and stick it right there. Take your G sensor, put a piece of double-sided tape on that and stick your sensor right there. There you have it. No screws, easy peasy. Your sensor may be different than mine. Mine is an older model. It has USB-A and USB-C. The USB-A is because the sensor requires five volt, which is typically delivered by USB-A. I do believe Creality has removed the A and found that the USB-C delivers enough power to run the sensor. On the back of your Nebula pad, there's a USB-C connector. Plug the sensor into that. With your sensor plugged in, press the gear button and look for optimization of vibration vanes. Because your Nebula is a new install, your firmware may be outdated. When a new over-the-air firmware pushes, I do believe this category's name will change, so don't be alarmed if yours says something different. Click into that. If the nebula sees your sensor, you will get this message, normal sensor status, and it will tell you to attach the sensor to your tool head. We've already done that. Go ahead and press already installed. Go ahead and press start detecting. Your machine will vibrate like a crazy person for several minutes. This is normal. When it's complete, we will now install the sensor on the print bed. I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of double-sided tape. I simply peeled the sensor off and I'm going to stick it right there. in the middle of my bed. Keep in mind, on the Ender 3 version 3 KE, the bed mount for that sensor is right here. So you can move it wherever is comfortable. I just tend to use the center. Go ahead, press already installed and press start detecting. Your bed will begin to vibrate like crazy. Depending on your firmware version, the completion screen may vary. Mine says detect again. Please don't push that. Press the back arrow. Press home. Once you've completed your tests, you may remove the sensor. Should you relocate, make any physical changes, or suspect any issue with your printer, that's a good time to rerun these calibrations. Otherwise, you're good to continue printing without it. You have successfully installed the Nebula Pad on the Ender 3 version 3 SE and are ready to go with Creality Cloud and all the bells and whistles that come with it. I'm Great Adventure and you're on 3D Rundown.